five ways to prepare your pipes for winter. If you're protecting your pipes like this, you're gonna have a problem. So as you see right now, we're talking outdoor piping. Now this is actually pull piping, but it's good and exposed so I can show you exactly what I'm talking about. In this video, we'll also be talking about hose bibs, frost proofs that stick out of the wall and hose bibs that stick up out of the ground and exposed piping up in an attic. So if you've got certain installations, you can look at this, see what we use, and then think about how could I use that where I'm at. As long as you're protecting your pipes, it's gonna help. Now, if you've got certain pipes that you can't protect, remember, leave a faucet dripping, leave the cabinet doors open, and try to heat up that room that way. If you need to set a fan there to blow air up under that cabinet, do whatever you have to do. Now, let's get started on the pipe. Okay, so this is gonna be your cheapest and probably least effective way to go. This is just very thin insulation wrap. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this up now. I'm gonna save this because we're gonna use it again in a little bit with our best way to go. But you open this up, and what you're gonna do, you're gonna wrap it. Now, I like to keep this roll really, really tight because you're gonna roll around just like you would with Teflon tape. You wanna pull it and keep it snug. And as you see, I have gloves on. Now, the reason being, I don't want all this insulation all over my hands. So you're gonna pull it snug right there. Now, when you first put this on too, take a piece of tape and tape it to the bottom. That way you're not fighting it. But then as you come up, you wanna move up, up the pipe a little bit. So you wanna keep going until you build this all the way up. Now, this roll here will probably cover this one section of pipe. You wanna make sure you overlap it. The more you overlap, the more R factor you're gonna create, the more heat, the more heat you're gonna help hold inside the pipes. But to be honest, the cold's gonna penetrate this pretty quick and it will get to this. So that's why I say, this is probably the least effective way, but it is better than nothing. Anything at all you can do to protect your pipes is gonna be a big deal. Okay, so next is the Armaflex insulation. Now, it's got a split in it. Now, as you can see, this does not fit this particular pipe. You can order this for three quarter or one inch, anything like that. But if I wanted to protect this, what I could do open that up and put that around that like that. On the, this side here, I can either cut this to match it up, which is what a great insulation person would do, or I can overlap it. Put this right around in here like this, tape it together, and then overlap here. Now, what I don't like about that, I'm gonna create an air gap. With this air gap, the cold can get in. So what I'm gonna do is look at if I wanted to cut it, Now, I know a lot of you insulators are laughing at me right now. I oh, know. Cut it, pull it together, tape it together, get it where you've got a good tight seam there. That way, no air gets in. Tape it this way, and then when I was done, I'd come back through and wrap it around. That way you get it tight, you don't let any air get in there, and you don't have any problems. So now I'm gonna give you what I think is the best. This is an electrical heating tape. Now what this is gonna do, and I recommend this to customers in a lot of different situations, but it comes with everything that you need in here. So there's different ways to put this on. What I like doing is sticking it right down at the base and I do wrap around it a little bit. And then I wanna come up and I wanna keep the heat on the bottom of the pipe. So you'll look at this, you'll run it all the way up in here, run it as far down as you can, because what this is gonna do, heat rises. So if I can attach the heat tape at the bottom, and look, it comes with tape to do it. And I like this because this tape 
is made for this. It's a little fiber tape, so it's not gonna melt. It's not gonna dry out. You're not gonna have any problems. Now, as you can see what I've done, I've got it along the bottom of the pipe here, but here I've wrapped it around my valves. Now these valves can be very expensive. That's why I wanna make sure I protect them very, very well. So I wrap that around there as good as I can, but then once I get the heat tape on, now remember that thin fiberglass wrap that we used before? Well, we're fixing to put it on again. So when you get to a point where you're doing an elbow, something like this, you'll definitely want to tape that up. We pulled it so hard that the outer coating we broke, so we taped it back together to get it up. But guys, you want to come through this here, like I said earlier, and tape it. So we use this in the beginning is the worst way to do this. The least expensive, but one of the worst. But when you add the electrical heat tape to it, now it's one of the best because it's going to hold that water in there, keep it warm where you don't have any freeze breaks. And then remember to plug it in. If you don't plug it in, it ain't gonna work. Now, one thing we're gonna look at too, here in Texas, it very seldom gets cold enough that we have to worry about freezing the filter. But if I lived up north, or if I knew it was gonna be as cold as it has got here, zero degrees for a long time, I may wanna think about protecting my filter or even draining it. So first thing I'm gonna do is wrap it with a blanket then we're gonna cover it with a trash bag to try to help keep any heat at all inside. Now at this point, I would probably go ahead and duct tape everything, get it to where it's holding it up against the pipe, up against the filter as much as it could, and then try to wrap it with plastic to keep in as much of the heat as we can. Now, what I do here in the front is split this, pull it down in between it, Cut that right there and wrap it down in between us. That way we can get it in as tight as we want. Guys, here's all we're trying to do. We're trying to teach you how to protect your pipe, how to keep your outdoor pipes from freezing, whether they're at your plumbing system or maybe it's your water supply line coming in from the well or something. Taking care of your pipes in the beginning, trying to take care of them before you have a problem is gonna help you, it's gonna save you a lot of heartache because man, when some of these pipes bust, I have seen some break right at the concrete line. Now you gotta chip out the concrete, get down in there to make the repair. You wanna do anything and everything you can to protect your piping system. Now, let's go check out hydrants. So now we're at a wall hydrant or frost proof, depending on what you have. Now, there's some different things to do. First of all, of course, make sure your water's shut off and then disconnect your hose. If that's the only thing you do, all year, disconnect your hose. The reason being, if this is a frost proof, it's installed where it should drain, or it should be installed that way. So I'm gonna go ahead and unscrew the hose, and I've got a little pressure on it. So that tells me there's a sprayer or something on the other end. This thing still has pressure on it. So I wanna make sure that I get the pressure up. Now here's the thing, if I wouldn't have disconnected this hose, and it would have froze up, what have happened is, my hose could have broke. If this would have froze up, the valve could have broke, the frost proof could have broken inside the wall and me not even known it. That is the worst problem. The reason being, you may not use this all winter long when it broke inside. But now you come out in the summer and you wanna wash your truck, you hook up a hose with a sprayer, you turn the water on, guess what? It's leaking inside your wall. I've actually got videos from people where the bottom of their brick ledge, it's pouring water out because they filled up their wall with water. Now, how do we protect this? Well, there's different ways. I've seen people cut insulation, I'm gonna show you that. I've seen people just wrap it with a towel. And then I'm gonna show you what I think is probably the best way. So the very first thing that I've seen is, people take that same Ar Armaflex insulation like we use on pipe, and try and cut it and make it seal off everything here. And that really just does not always happen but it is better than nothing. If this is all you have, it can work. And I'm gonna allow just a little bit run over here for that valve handle. Now, 
as you see, it doesn't fit very well. So we'd run into the same problem there that we did on the exposed pipe earlier. You're gonna allow air to get in here. Now you can try and pull tape and tighten it up and stuff like that. It's not gonna work super well. Now, the second best way to do this that I've seen is just completely wrap it with a big towel. Now what I'm gonna show you is something, if this is the way you're gonna do it, add this way and the next way together. So let me grab a towel. Hold this towel up so it just gives me a long, narrow towel. Reason being, I'm gonna try to wrap it around everything in here. I'm gonna hold it on here, try and wrap this back part up and around and keep it as close to the wall as possible. So what I'm doing is I'm just creating R factors. I'm creating barriers to try to keep the cold air out. But once I do this, I wanna draw it in there tight, so I'm gonna go ahead and put some tape around it. And again, I'm trying to keep it back as close to the house as possible. Now this other section, you see the opening right here? I'm gonna try and pack everything down in it right there and then wrap this around the front of it like that. Now the first time I saw this, I thought it was pretty crazy, but I realized all they're doing is creating insulation around the valve itself. Now, once you get it like this, tape it up tight because you want as little air as possible in there. Now, does it look beautiful? Probably not. Will it work? It'll actually work pretty good. You've got that towel up around it tight. You got the tape holding everything in place. This will help protect you through winter. Now, these are the one that they sell in the big box stores. I have no problem with them. What you wanna do is you wanna get it, you can lock that little rubber piece on there. I like to put mine around the handle because it's gonna keep it center. Sometimes you can put it down around the hose spout. Take it, pull this out. It's just got a little slip lock on it. Now you don't wanna pull it too hard because you don't wanna bust the rubber there, but it's got insulation on the back that's gonna help keep it sealed against the house. And this is gonna help keep the cold air out. If this is a frost proof, you shouldn't have any problems anyway, but this is just gonna help protect you. Once you take the hose off, you've really eliminated most of the problems. If you've got a hose bib that sticks up out of the ground, what you wanna do is you wanna protect the pipe. That's the main thing. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna take some of that Armaflex insulation, and what I would recommend doing is sticking it down all the way to the ground, getting a mark on it, and you wanna cut it up as high as it'll go. Now me, I come all the way up to the handle. Then what I'm gonna do from the top down, I'm gonna look at it right there. I wanna cut just a little bit of a notch in the opening. For my spout. Get it on there tight. Slide it down as far as it'll go. Now, there are some different types. There's some Armaflex that have the peel strip where you peel it and then it sticks together going down. But either way, whatever you've got, make sure you tape up the seam, tape around it. That way, it doesn't go anywhere. Now, this is a good way to protect this. Does it always work? Not necessarily, but it's a good place to start. So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna take you to the next level. What would be even better than this? Well, to wrap it up a little bit, and then protect it with a bucket. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this moving pad, try and get it to the height that I want. And I'm gonna wrap this up. I wanna do two things. I wanna wrap it up tight, but I also wanna make sure I've got some over the top. Okay. Once I get everything packed like that, take a bucket and make sure I'm getting all of it packed up inside of it. So what I've got, I've got the moving blanket wrapped around it. I've got a little bit sticking outside the bottom, but that's okay, it's all the way down on the ground. I've got the bucket here to protect it. Now this is better than just the insulation. 
What I would do here too, pick a concrete block, take something and put on here just so it doesn't blow off if the wind gets crazy or anything like that. But how can I go even better? Now, I'm not gonna have a lot of room here, but I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this towel around the bucket. Now, I would tape this off. I could have even done, I could have even done that on the moving blanket to help make get the bucket on even easier. But it'll set right now. Now I've got a 10 gallon bucket that you do whatever you have to do to get it on there. Now we're right up next to the valve box, but I know this is now really protected good. Chances are this thing's never gonna freeze, especially not down here in the Texas area. But while we're at the valve box, have you ever had backflow protectors or your yard valve that may be frozen broke? Well, they're not buried very deep. And if you open it up and look down in there, there's just a bunch of cold air running. When it gets cold out here, it gets cold in here too. Now you can uncover this and try to insulate everything, which is fine. That can help you really take it to a whole nother level. Now on this one here, we've actually got a bleeder valve. So what we can do, if this line is full and we know it's gonna freeze outside, we can shut off the water supply line to this line, open up the bleeder valve and drain it off. But what we always recommend is just taking another one of those moving blankets, packing it around in here, that way you're creating insulation between the valves and the lid of the valve box. So let's go ahead and fold this thing up and get it in here. But what we wanna do is we wanna fold this up where it is as big as the valve box and then pack it down in there. Now you can do another thing. You can open it up and wrap it around the pipes as much as you can. The whole thing is you wanna try to create a blockage of any of the air coming down. So I've got it up against the edge of the valve box. I've got it down around the pipe really, really good. And I'm packing it down just as tight as I can get it everywhere that I can. Now, if this is a problem you've had before, you may actually wanna get two blankets to put down in there. Create as much gap as you can in between the valves and the cold air up here. And then put your lid right back on. So guys, this valve box, this could be your valve box up at your house or your double check on your irrigation system. And like I said, if you've ever had one of these freeze up before, if it does get that cold in your area, make sure you put two blankets in here. Get as much insulation as you can do it before it gets cold, before it starts freezing, and this can save you a lot of money. Now the last place, of course, is up here in the attic. And you probably don't wanna get up here in the middle of winter or in the middle of summer. But in that in-between time when the temperature's not too bad, get up here and check your lines. Now, we've got an Armaflex line up here, but just touching it, I feel something neat. See this on the inside? It was never peeled and put together. So air can actually sneak in between this. So I need to get back up here, pull this off, that way it can adhere together with the adhesive that's in it, and then probably tape it off just to make sure. Now, I can move it this way until it's good and tight on both ends. Just if you've got water lines up in your attic, this can cause the most damage. If these lines freeze and break, water doesn't just go straight down, it floods the entire area and gets wider and wider as it goes down. And also guys, as you're getting prepared for these freeze breaks, Make sure that just in case it does still happen, you and every member of your family knows how to turn off your water. And we've got some great videos for that. If you like this video, you're definitely gonna like that one because if you've got a freeze break, that's the one you're gonna wanna check out. That's five big tips to help you protect your pipes this winter.